I want to show you a simple video which was generated during the experimental investigation to obtain this T0 variation. So, friends, the video which is running on the screen is the video of a triangular deck triceratop. The wave is attacking the buoyant legs, the ball joints are placed here and the buoyant legs are getting displaced in rotation degrees of freedom, but the deck is still remaining horizontal. The instrumentation is done on the deck as well as buoyant legs to estimate the T0 variation on the buoyant legs and this history variation is what we have captured. So, just for indication looking at the stress variation in this curve, we can also try to find out the maximum and minimum variation and the mean value in all the legs. So, in the buoyant leg 1, 2 and 3 which are plotted with different colors as you see in this indication here has a different mean value and comparing this mean value with the initial pretension T0 initial value we have also estimated the percentage variation. The percentage variation in this is also not equal it means all the three legs undergo dynamic teeth tension variation they are not equal. So, when these legs variations are not equal it causes rotation of the deck which is inducing roll or pitch motion to the deck simultaneously. Our investigation in this particular lecture is not the response of the deck, but the response in terms of fatigue estimates for the T0 variation on any one of the legs typically whose time history is given to me. Let us pick up any one signal and do a fatigue estimate then we will see how the service life can be estimated. So, before we do that let us make some important observations. The variation in tension in all legs are dynamic in nature. The peak in tension at any instant is one of the tethers does not necessarily mirror in the other two tethers. The maximum variation varies anywhere from 14.55 percent to as minimum as 8.6 percent. The teta with maximum number of cyclic variation has 9 peaks in the simulation for about a period of 900 seconds. So, the length of the record what we are going to see here is 900 seconds. The dynamic nature of tension variation is attributed to the dynamic nature of the wave excitation. It is important to observe that peaks in all tethers are not seen at the same time instance. This is essentially due to the phase lag between the wave approach on each leg. Since the range of teeth tension variation does not exceed 20 percent, it is guaranteed that teethers will not pull out, but the cyclic variation of large in number, but low amplitude can result in the fatigue failure. Therefore, the design is now investigated for the fatigue failure which we are going to do now. So, the stress histogram is to be required. We have employed the rain flow counting algorithm. From the rain flow counting algorithm, we have plotted the stress histogram. The rain flow counting algorithm as proposed by Messi and Yendo is one of the interesting methods by which one can estimate the fatigue damage which is used in this present study. So, the typical histogram what we got from the typical stress time history. I repeat again we pick up any one signal for example, in this case it is buoyant leg 1. We pick up the stress history from the stress history we used the rain flow counting method got the histogram where stress is plotted in the x axis and number of counts which is small n is plotted in the y axis and the stress range is also given in terms of the values. After which using DNV RP C203, we have estimated the capital N value from the governing equation. We already said the record length is for 900 seconds. We estimated the cumulative damage and from the cumulative damage we estimated the service life of the structure. So, we all know the cumulative damage is given by this equation which we already saw in the previous lecture. 
So, for a given stress range, the n value is estimated using the equation given in the design code. The small n is actually the count of the stress bin which we calculated from the figure. For example, a specific stress range has a specific count which we calculated. The small n is available and based upon the capital N and small n we found out D. Once we know D we can find the cumulative damage and then one can estimate the service life by equating this damage to 1. So, we got the service life as 1 in 9.47 years which I will show you now as a very clear problem. So, this is the typical stress variation which we got for a specific leg. We have taken the record length for our analysis as 2000 seconds. We then plotted the stress range for the number of counts from the figure directly. Once we get this, we are able to get the small n and the capital N value for a specific stress range. I wish that let us try to do the whole program, the whole exercise by a computer program. So, the MATLAB coding for estimating fatigue damage and service life is now available on the screen. This program actually estimates the fatigue damage and service life of the structure. MS Excel file with stress variation is the input required for this program in Excel as format which reads the file directly. Then it specifies the time for which simulation is done. It plots the stress histogram and then a typical output as total fatigue damage and service life or as an output for this particular problem the total fatigue damage is value given on the screen now and the service life is estimated as 13.9 times 5 years which is from the computer program whereas you can see the stress bin which is plotted in the screen now at this moment which was done by manual calculation. You can see the stress bin plotted which is an output from the computer program and this figure as well as output what we have here are exactly same. So, this program actually computes exactly the stress bins which gives you the stress range and equivalent number of n values. So, this equation uses governing equation log n is log a minus m log s log a for this problem is given as 15.835 and m is taken as 4. So, this is actually as per d and b r p c 203 table 2 3. Let us say for example, one specific value the stress range the stress range is 31.632 let us say 31.632. For 31.632 the capital N value is computed from the above equation which is log n is equal to 15 15.835 minus 4 log 31.632 in this case it is log to the base 10 so log n is 9.834 therefore n is 10 power 9.834 which gives me 6.83 10 power 9 small n from this figure is found to be this is capital N and this is small n is found to be 1. So, now T is estimated as small n by capital N which becomes 1.46 10 power minus 10 which is seen here. 
Similarly, for various stress ranges, similar n are calculated, then capital N is calculated from this equation and D is estimated as you see from this table, okay? which is the same procedure what we had in the last example. So, now the total damage estimated is summation of i equals 1 to n m n by n which is 4.53 into 10 power minus 6 for this problem. So, this was estimated for 200 seconds sorry for 2000 seconds therefore, fatigue damage for 1 second is 4.53 10 power minus 6 by 2000. But I do not want to know the damage, but I want to know the service life of the structure. So, in a year the damage could be will be equivalent to 4.53 into 10 power minus 6 by 2000. This is for 1 second. So, 60, 60, 24 and 365 which comes to 0 0.0714. So, friends we all know that this D should be equivalent to 1 to estimate the service life. So, the fatigue damage is 0 0.0714 in 1 year. Therefore, service life is 1 by 0 0.0714 which will be 13.99 years. Say let us say 14 years. So, the damage would be equivalent to 1 in 14 years which is now at amounting to the service life of the structure. So, the corresponding coding gives you the service life estimate as 13.995 and the total fatigue damage comes to around this value. So, as a summary we have learnt how the fatigue damage estimate is estimated in triceratops. We have also learnt what is triceratops very briefly. It is a new generation platform which is conceived for ultra deep waters. We have understood from the dynamic T0 variation that is teeth tension variation how one can compute the stress history and then the stress histogram from the histogram find n observe small n find d and then calculate service life. We have also given the computer program to estimate the service life of the platform. Okay. So, the lecture summarizes and this is the last lecture what we have as far as module 3 is concerned. It is very interesting that we should be able to give some tutorial solutions. So, tutorials will be posted in the NPTEL website. There will be lot of numerical examples which will be asked to be solved numerical problems. So, try to attend these problems and solve these tutorials for your self practice. I have already given the list of references. Please look into the references, read the papers related to this and additional reading in terms of design codes, learning more about fatigue damage, learning more about stochastic process is a very good homework for you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.